Hey, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's project, we're going to make a goblet out of a piece of butternut. And this is the edge of the can. Um, same piece of, if you look back in one of my earlier videos of the butternut bowl that I made, this is off the same piece of wood. It's just a, an end. There was a big knot that was not usable for a bowl. So I just thought I'd take a slab off the side. It's really nice wood, very light. It's got a really cool green in it. It's, it's soft, so I was kind of hoping to make a kind of a decorative stem on it and quite thin. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it feels when we get to that point. Um, so I'm gonna get this in round, put a tenon on it, put it in the four jaw chuck and chuck it up. And, um, and we'll see what we can make this look like. No difference which end I put the tenon on. I think I'll put it down here. Okay, so I'm just gonna sand this little dowel off that was up against the chuck that I couldn't get into and put it in the four jaw chuck and we'll put it on. All right, so we got the inside finished up <clears throat> with uh, a brace of paste. It's all sanded up now with the uh, regular microfilm. I'm just gonna move you back up top now and we'll start shaping the, the outside of the goblet, turn a nice long stem on it, see how it goes. This is a skew chisel. I got it for Christmas. It's a Carter and Sons uh, uh, chisel. I've never actually owned a, a proper, decent quality skew chisel and never learned to use one. Uh, primarily turn bowls and uh, you don't use a skew on bowls. And so one of my goals for 2021 is to learn how to use this thing properly. It's the right tool to use for the detail work that you're gonna see coming up in the, the stem of this goblet. Uh, but I'm not confident enough with it to do that, so I so I improvised. Um, but this is the tool that should be used. The quality of the cut that you can get if you know how to operate this would uh, save a ton of sanding. Uh, and you'll see later on in the video 
or what I'm talking about in terms of sanding in the stem where this chisel used properly would have made really clean cuts. So I'm going to sand the outside of the goblet part itself, the cup part itself right now, while there's still lots of rigidity in the piece, because once the stem gets turned, this is going to get pretty flexible, and it'd be very difficult to sand at that point without breaking the stem. Well, they're trying to end this up and see if I can make something out of it. Okay, I'm all sanded up now to 320. I'm not going to uh, go any finer than that on this one. I think I'm going to hope the eraser paste does what it's supposed to do and takes out any little blemishes if I can get it to go. The abrasive paste is very, very delicate. <clears throat> I'm just going to figure out what I'm going to do here at the bottom. I don't really want to have an overbearing bottom, so it's a little, it's definitely thicker than it needs to be. It's going to be parted off, so um, I think I might just round it back a little bit here and and uh, that'll leave me some room for my parting tool. All right so far I <clears throat> survived the sanding so now we're going to see if it'll survive the, sand, the uh, brace of paste. I certainly at this point hope that it does. Okay, so I've got <clears throat> both now the regular and the microfine abrasive paste on. I'm debating about putting on some Hampshire Sheen. I'd love to. I think it would look really nice with that little bit of shine on it. But I don't know if it'll stand it. It is very fragile. Kind of looks antique -y like it is. But I have to try it, I guess. Because I'm going to set this here so that I can use it as a reference of where this is supposed to be. So that when I'm putting pressure on it, I'm not bending it one way or the other. Well, that's not so bad. All right, I was gonna part that off with the parting tool, but I think I'm gonna leave that mostly as it is, and I'm just gonna take it off to my uh, vertical belt sander, sand the tenon off, bring it back, and I'll buff the bottom off like I normally do. And I'll show you that when I get back. If you're still watching, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. Uh, there'll be some stills up at the end of the video. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you didn't care for it, please give it a thumbs down and leave a comment as to why so that I can improve. Uh, thanks again to all my subscribers. The channel's really grown the last little while and I really do appreciate that. 
Uh, and subsequently, there will be a video released on Saturday afternoon, which will be February the 6th. So keep an eye out for that one. That's just instructions on how to get your name in the draw for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. And that is going to be a hybrid resin and burrow bowl where the winner gets to choose the color of the resin. And if you haven't subscribed, it's not too late. You can still get your name in. That draw runs until the end of February. And I'll be drawing it at midnight on the 28th of February. So lots of time to get your name in if you haven't subscribed. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.